Well, hello out there, everyone. Welcome back to another one of my Let's Plays. I'm going to look at a real classic this time. I think for now, while I'm introducing the game, I might just turn the sound down. Okay, just so it doesn't do that annoying uh, sound from that water drop. Anyway, I uh, wanted to introduce this one really quickly. This is The Black Cauldron, one of my earliest adventure game memories, playing along with more of the old Sierra game uh, adventure game classics. So this one obviously was based on a, a children's fantasy novel, The the Black Cauldron, same name, by Lloyd Alexander, written back around in the 60s, I think 65, according to my research. Um, this was around the time that Sierra really started to, to find their groove. This was released in 1986, I believe, around the same time as uh, the very first LP that I did, King, the original King's Quest III. Um, this one, as you can see, is a little bit of a new fan-made remake for those who are familiar with the original. All of this down here, this, this mouse point-and-click parser, this was not here. Um, one of the reasons I... Uh, I found one of the things I found kind of annoying in the original game was the idea of the t uh, the controls. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, "Oh, is it one of those text parsers?" And unfortunately, no, it was not. Uh, they they dumbed down the controls to to make it more appealing and more easily accessible to children. So it was kind of unique. Um, all of the commands that you used were the function keys. You know, those little F4, F5, F6, F7 keys that aren't as used as much anymore. Uh, as they were back in the day. Now, I can't remember exactly what the commands were. I think F6 was like a use command uh, to activate, you know, like an activation command to use anything, like open doors or pick stuff up or things like that. F8 was used uh, just to look around, kind of get a description of the room. Uh, you use the arrow keys as normal to walk around. And that one I played way back in the day on a Tandy 1000. That was one of the first computers I, that uh, I ever had that my dad put together for my family and I. And so basically, this was one of my very first experiences in playing an adventure game. I didn't really know what the heck I was doing. Uh, the music kind of creeped me out a little bit. I had actually, n I, I did not see The Black Cauldron until it was re-released on DVD. I want to say late 90s, because as many of you probably are aware, this was uh, this was based off of a movie version, a Disney movie adaptation of the original book, uh, released in 1985, and I could probably make a video just to talk about that movie. Uh, it has its cult following. I actually really enjoy the film, but the thing is, it bombed in the theaters at the time. It did so poorly and was so... Um, was so controversial at the time. It was one of the first. Uh, it was the first Disney movie that was uh, given a PG rating because it's actually pretty. It's fairly dark and it's rather intense. And they thought that, you know, the real little kitties might have some nightmares on it. So they put a, a higher rating on it than you would expect. And I don't know. It just. It really didn't do well in the box office. The animation style was pretty unique. I thought it was cool. Um, the music, the soundtrack was fantastic, especially certain pieces, one of which you probably already heard at the beginning. I, that, that's one of my favorites, the, the theme of the uh, villain in this one. Very, very chilling and very driving music. I love it. But I, it just wasn't received well. And the truth of the matter is, Disney almost went under because of this movie. They stopped making animated movies for years, and it would only be once they got back up started with The Little Mermaid that they would make more animated films. So I find the movie and the whole um, ethos interesting, ethos, mythos interesting, all because of that. So... Anyway, um, I think I might have to start paying more attention to the game because one of the game mechanics here, as you can see, is that um, if you stand around talking for two, or if I stand around just not doing anything, or if you move around um, doing this as I'm kind of just introducing the game, uh, there's a timer. You have to eat and you have to drink water in this game to keep your character alive, or if you, if you don't have already enough supply, that's, that's one really easy way to die. So... Um, I might actually die as I'm sitting here introducing the game to you. So anyway, 
Um, this is actually, uh, I wanted to, as usual, I want to just get a little time to share my thoughts about it. This is a very quick play. This is significantly shorter than some of the other uh, Sierra Adventure games. I might even be able to do this all in one recording session. I'm not sure. I'm going to give it a stab. I'm going to give it a try. Uh, why did I pick this game to LP? Just because it has so much nostalgia factor for me. I mean, half of this, it, yeah, see, now I'm, <laughs> if I don't get some water pretty soon, you're going to see the game's first death. That'll be tragic. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so this game just has so many memories for me. Obviously, you can see with the graphic power, it doesn't really hold up all that well. Um, I like the fact that this fan um, on a website called SCIprogramming.com, whose name only goes by SCloud, apparently took the engine and turned it into um, a point-and-click interface such that, that it's a little easier and it's a little more accessible for today's um, systems and for today's game players. This, this interaction, this parser is much, much easier to use and a lot less confusing than the, the other one, which was kind of funny because they were trying to make it simple for the kids at the time and then ended up just kind of being annoying. So, um, I probably ought to restart because I think I'm about to die of thirst. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Oh, that's right, I had the music turned off. <laughs> Else you would have heard the, the stirring death theme. Some of this music, uh, obviously it's a lot of bleeps and bloops when it's heard out of a, a PC sound card system. Uh, the Tandy 1000 actually had a polyphonic um, music ability, so it sounded a lot better. You know, I, I watched... I watched an LP of this earlier in order to kind of remind myself of a few things. This will not be a blind run. This is basically uh, just my re-experiencing the game, trying to get through it, and just to let people know that this game exists and just how important it was to uh, my developing my love for the adventure genre at a very young age. Anyway, so... Okay, so now that we've reset, we've got our sound. Let's get right to it. Let's start playing, and uh, let's play The Black Cauldron. This is the cottage of Dalbin, the ancient wizard of Prydain. You have lived here for as long as you can remember, serving as assistant pig keeper of Kyre Dalbin. And who are we? Vanity is never an attractive trait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there are a couple of new um, messages that have been put in by this fan remake, I think. Because, for example, you couldn't look at yourself, so they had to... Um, this person, the developer, obviously had to put in a couple new uh, stock phrases for things to look at. Alright, look at that. The trees surrounding the cottage of Dalbin are healthy and happy. There is a barrel here used to catch rainwater. I'll have to make note of that later. So I didn't really explain much about um, the main character. You play as Terran, the assistant pig keeper uh, for Dalbin here. You live here happily, basically serving as a farm boy. So, why don't we go in and say hello? You're not close enough. Oh, the many times I've tried to do something in a Sierra game and it's told me, you're not close enough. Ever since you were young, you have loved this cottage and its master, the wise old Dalbin. Dalbin is studying his Book of Three, a mysterious volume that no one else is allowed to read. That's a reference to another one of the books in the Chronicles of Prydain series. The Book of Three was actually the first book that Lloyd Alexander wrote. The Black Cauldron is the second in the series. So, I always thought that was interesting, that they must have liked this one the best and thought it would make a cool game. All right, so why don't we talk to our master. Taryn, it's time for you to feed our favorite pig, Henwen, says old Dalbin. Take good care of her. She is a very special animal. Okay. So if I remember from the movie, Henwen likes to eat this stuff. Henwen's gruel is warming over the fire. Yummy. You carefully reach over the fire and take Henwen's pot of simmering gruel. Also need to see what's in this little cubby hole here, cupboard, before we leave. You open the cupboard. Now this little graphic here is new. This is for this uh, fan remake. 
but we've got some essential items here we're definitely going to need to take with us. You take the apple. It certainly looks delicious. This looks like enough bread for three meals. The water flask is made of soft leather. Ah, that's very useful. We're going to have to make sure we, because <laughs> we remember we died earlier from uh, dehydration, so we're going to have to make sure we get water and always carry it with us. So this is also new. There's a little inventory screen. Before it was just sort of a, um, I think you hit tab and it just showed you um, word printouts of your items. This pot of gruel makes a tasty dish, if you're a pig. This is your trusty water flask. Dalbin delicious apples are your favorite. Crisp and tasty. You have some bread, baked at Kyer Dalbin. So first of all, let's take our flask and get some water. I am not close enough. Of course not. You quickly fill your flask with water. Okay, Let's go feed our little piggy. Got some other farm animals here. Another, another duck and a... Looks like Pappy the goat running around there. I'm right next to it. How am I not close enough? Got some corn. Can't remember what that's used for. I gotta try to avoid the goat, but it looks like he's stuck in that little corner. If you get too close to the goat, he doesn't take kindly to you. And he does that. <laughs> ah, now, I'm, now he's stuck on me. Fortunately, this game also lets you use the arrow keys. The, the mouse parser is useful, but it's a little clunky. So why don't we feed our piggy? You feed the gruel to your hungry pig, Henwin. Henwin certainly enjoys eating. Oh, Henwin is trotting away. Perhaps she's going to Dalvin's cottage. Let's see what's so exciting over there. Nope. Stay away from me, goat. No, go away. Don't. Whew. Stupid goat. Look, something is wrong with Henwin. As Henwin places her snout in the water, she enters a trance. A vision appears above the bowl. Taran, says Dalbin, you've never known about Henwin's magic powers, but unfortunately the time has come for me to tell you. Henwin can show us things that happen in faraway places. Through her vision, she is now telling me a terrible tale. The Horned King, the most evil ruler in all Pridane, is searching for Henwin. He could force her to reveal the location of the Great Black Cauldron. If he finds the Black Cauldron, he will have unspeakable power. Terran, you must take Henwen to the hidden cottage of the Fair Folk. They are our only hope to keep her from the Horned King. Good luck, Terran. Take this coil of rope and hurry, before the Horned King's power becomes unstoppable. Goodbye, Terran. Hurry, get Henwen to safety. Yes, sir, Chiefy. Hope you could hear me um, the narr narrating earlier because the music music got a little loud there. I'm probably gonna have to edit that down a bit. All right, so now we're making some progress. So why don't we save? Played around with the game a little earlier just to make sure it worked. Those were previous saves. All right, so why don't we go for a walk and see if we can find where we're supposed to go? This bridge marks the boundary of Kyer Dalbin. You wonder what the future holds. Oh no! It's one of the Horned King's evil Gwithaints. Ah, uh, no! The Gwithaint grabs you and Henwen and flies away. 
Where is it taking you? One of the Horned King's Gwithaints is carrying you high above Perdane. You hold Henwyn tightly in your arms and can feel her heart beating in fear. I'm sure Terran isn't exactly in a state of calm right now, either. The Gwithaint has taken your beloved Henwen and carry her over the Eagle Mountains in the direction of the Horned King's castle. Where is that vile creature taking my beloved Henwen, you think? I must find her and get her to safety. This is a shady looking area. Chills run down your spine as you wonder what those mountains hold. There's nothing like this around Kyr Dalbin. Your throat is dry. That means I better take a drink. You take a cool, refreshing drink of water from your flask. Nectar of the Gods! Sorry, couldn't resist. As you can see, or hear rather, at times there's not a lot of background music. I think there were only a few themes in the game, and most of the time you're wandering around, it gets pretty quiet. You discover a musical lute inside a hole in this tree. You could always take the loot and run. Why don't we do that? You take the loot and realize that it is slightly out of tune. Well, let's tune it up. After a brief tuning, the loot sounds better. For an assistant pig keeper, you make beautiful music.